fully factor p of x, which is 12x cubed plus 16x squared minus 5x minus 3. Okay, so to solve this problem, we'll apply our four-step process to apply the factor theorem. And in step one of that process, we'll use the rational zeros theorem to help us make educated guesses at potential roots. So remember, our first step is to guess a potential root and then determine the uh, corresponding factor once we have confirmed that that root is indeed a root of our polynomial. Um, and the rational zeros theorem tells us that our potential roots should be chosen uh, to have numerators that are factors of the constant term and denominators that are factors of the leading coefficient. So in this case, our constant term negative 3 has factors of plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 3. The leading coefficient 12 has factors of plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and so on. That'll be enough for now. Okay, now I always recommend that you start with plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 1, or in other words, uh, plus or minus 1 as potential roots because they're easy to check. So in this case, we'll check p of 1 to see if it's 0. I can tell you right away, just looking at the numbers here, it will not be 0. p of negative 1, again, very similar story. It's not going to be 0. Now next, generally, I would recommend that you move on to plus or minus 3 over plus or minus 1. Um, because that will give you an integer potential root to check, and generally those are easier to check. But in this case, I have a sneaking suspicion we're going to end up with a fractional root uh, as our first root. So how about we check plus or minus 1 over plus or minus 2, or in other words, plus or minus a half next. So p of positive 1 half to start is going to be 12 times a half cubed plus 16 times a half squared minus 5 times a half minus 3. So 1 half cubed gives us 1 eighth. 12 over 8 gives us 3 over 2 if we reduce both numerator and denominator by a factor of 4. And we have plus 16 times a half squared or 16 times a quarter or 16 over 4 which is just equal to 4. And we have minus 5 times a half so minus 5 halves minus 3. Now 3 halves minus 5 halves gives us negative 2 halves or just negative 1. So this is the same as 4 minus 1 minus 3 if we combine the negative 5 halves and negative 3 halves. Now this is of course equal to 0. So that means that 1 half is a root and generally here uh, in the past we would say x minus 1 half, x minus our root, is a factor. But in this case I'm going to caution you against that. When you find a fractional root, I find that it's much easier to multiply through by the denominator of the constant term of that factor. So in this case, that means we multiply through by 2 to leave us with 2x minus 1 as our factor. Both approaches will work, but having the x minus 1 half is going to make things really messy when you try to divide in the future, and you're going to end up with a polynomial that doesn't have integer coefficients. In general, always multiply through by the denominator of the constant term of the binomial factor when you find it. Okay, so our next step is to divide our polynomial p of x by the factor we just found. I'm actually just going to cross this out because I don't want you to ever do this. So p of x divided by 2x minus 1 is our next step. So I'm going to do that uh, the long division way, since we can't synthetically divide by a binomial that has a leading coefficient other than 1. So we're going to have 2x minus 1 dividing p of x, which is 12x cubed plus 16x squared minus 5x minus 3. Okay, so we ask ourselves, what do we multiply 2x by to get 12x cubed? The answer is 6x squared. Then we multiply 6x squared by 2x minus 1 to leave us with 12x cubed minus 6x squared. Now we're going to subtract this from our polynomial, which means that the signs of both of these terms will flip. So we'll get a negative here and a positive here. So 12x cubed minus 12x cubed is 0. 16x squared plus 6x squared gives us 22x squared. I'll just get rid of that 0. For clarity's sake, next we bring down the negative 5x, like so. And now we ask ourselves, what do we multiply 2x by to get 22x squared? 
The answer is 11x. So we'll write that up top here. Then we multiply 11x by 2x minus 1 to leave us with 22x squared minus 11x. Again, we're going to subtract. So the uh, signs of both of these terms down here are going to flip. So we'll get a negative here and a positive here. So we have 22x squared minus 22x squared, which is 0. I won't bother to write it. Then we'll have negative 5x plus 11x, which is going to give us positive 6x. Now we ask, what do we multiply 2x by in order to get 6x? And the answer is positive 3. So we have 2x minus 1 times positive 3. The 3 times 2x gives us 6x. Oh, and it looks like I forgot to bring down this minus 3 from before. So I'll do that now. And then I have 3 times negative 1, which gives me negative 3. Again, we're going to subtract here, so these signs will both flip. Have a negative there, a positive there, and uh, 6x minus 6x gives us 0. Negative 3 plus 3 gives us 0. So we end up with 0, which is what we expect. Our remainder is 0, and our quotient is 6x squared plus 11x plus 3. Now, step 3 would normally be to repeat this process of finding a root and dividing by the corresponding factor until the quotient is quadratic, but in this case, our quotient is already quadratic. So we already have 6x squared plus 11x plus 3, so we don't need to find another factor and divide. Okay, so then what is step 4? Step 4 is to factor the quadratic. So this quadratic uh, is a messy trinomial, so we have to ask, what is the product of the leading coefficient and the constant term? 6 times 3 gives us 18. Now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 18 and add to 11. So have a little think about that. You should come out to positive 9 and positive 2. So that's going to give us um, the two numbers that we should split our middle term into. So we'll have 6x squared plus 9x plus 2x plus 3. Now, from the pair of terms on the left here, we can pull out a factor of 3x. So that'll leave us with 3x times 2x plus 3. And from the pair of terms on the right, we actually can't pull anything, so we'll just pull out a positive 1, leaving us with 2x plus 3. Okay, so now um, we can write this whole expression as the product of two factors. One of the factors will come from the matching brackets, 2x plus 3, and the other factor will be the combination of these two terms that are multiplying the matching brackets. So we'll have 3x plus 1 times 2x plus 3. The 3x plus 1 comes from the 3x and the plus 1, and the 2x plus 3 comes from the matching brackets. Okay, so now we factor the quadratic. Uh, we figured out this other factor earlier, so we can rewrite our original polynomial, p of x, as the product of these three factors that we found. It's 3x plus 1 times 2x plus 3 times 2x minus 1. Okay, so this is about as tough as one of these examples could possibly get. So if you can do this, you can do any factoring example.